Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on interpreting Pearson chi-square, the continuity correction, and Fisher's exact test in SPSS. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the SPSS data editor fictitious data I'll be using for this example. And I have two variables, training and outcome. Training has two levels, online and face-to-face, -face. and outcome has two levels, fail and pass. So let's assume that we have a specialized training program for counselors, a program designed to teach a specific skill, and we offer it online and face-to-face. -face. And then we have an assessment at the end of the course to determine whether the counselor has learned the particular skill that we are trying to teach. So the outcome is fail or pass. So training is a dichotomous variable. Outcome is a dichotomous variable as well. So this is a two by two chi-square that we'll be conducting. So what does the chi-square test tell us? Well, in this case, it's a chi-square test of independence. And it tells us if the training variable is independent of the outcome variable. It doesn't speak to causality, meaning online versus face-to-face -face and fail versus pass. We're not saying that training causes the outcome. Rather, is the training variable independent of outcome? And the null hypothesis in this case is that these variables are independent. So to conduct chi-square, I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Cross Tabs. And here, if we look at the research design. Even though the chi-square results won't tell us about causality, we are assuming that training, we're treating training as an independent variable, and outcome as a dependent variable. So typically, in this type of situation, training would go in the row list box and outcome in the column list box. It can be done the other way around. However, it's just a tradition to put the independent variable, or the one we're treating as an independent variable, in the row list box. And of course, the dependent variable in the column list box. Under statistics, I'm just going to add chi-square. I'm going to check that off. I'm not going to check off any other of the options here. Click continue. Under cells, observed is checked off by default for counts. I'm going to add the expected counts and the row, column, and total percentages. Click continue. No changes under format or style. I'll click OK to conduct chi-square. We have the output here in the statistics viewer. And if we look at this training times outcome cross tabulation. There are a few things we can look for here. In this example, if we look at online versus face to face in terms of the count, we can see that for online we have 24 fail and 21 pass. But for face to face it's 14 fail and 31 pass. So before even looking at the results of any of the tests, we are led to believe here that face-to-face -face is more associated with passing. Now whether it's statistically significant uh, is something we have to look at in the chi-square tests. But here we can see the counts. We have 21 pass for online compared to 31 face-to-face. -face. And of course the difference in 10 with the fail level of outcome as well, 24 to 14. Another thing we want to pay attention to here are the expected counts. And we can see the lowest expected count is 19. So if we move down to the chi-square tests, notice here at the bottom, zero cells have expected count less than five. The minimum expected count is 19. Again, we saw that up here in the training times outcome cross-tabulation. So in looking at the chi-square tests table, normally here in the situation, 
we would interpret the Pearson chi-square because we have no cells that have an expected count less than 5. And the minimum expected count is 19. Also in this example, our sample size is greater than 40. So the sample size being greater than 40 and zero cells having an expected count less than 5, it's not unusual to interpret Pearson chi-square. And in this case, 0 0.033, that is statistically significant. So we would say that we do not have independence between training and outcome. They are not independent. The two variables are not independent of one another. 0 0.033, less than the alpha of 0 0.05. However, there are a lot of guidelines uh, on this issue in terms of the Yates correction, which is this continuity correction and Fisher's exact test. So one of the popular guidelines for the continuity correction is if we have an expected count less than 10 in any of the cells. So we look up here to the cross tabulation and we have a value less than 10. We'd use the continuity correction, Yates correction. A popular guideline for interpreting Fisher's exact test would be that if any of the cells have an expected count less than 5. So less than 10 for continuity correction, less than 5 for Fisher's exact test. And another guideline we see with Fisher's exact test is that if greater than 20% of the cells have an expected count less than 5. So there is not agreement on this issue of Pearson chi-square versus the continuity correction and Fisher's exact test. And even though in this case you can see the results are very close to one another, the p-values are very close to one another, we would have a different finding. So we would assume the two variables are not independent based on Pearson chi-square value, point, the p-value of 0 0.033, and we would say they are independent. We would fail to reject the null hypothesis and say the variables are independent with the continuity correction, 0 0.055, and the result, the p-value resulting from Fisher's exact test. 0 0.054. So with all these different guidelines and theories regarding these three tests, which one do we use? How do we interpret the chi-square test table? I think that when you have a Pearson chi-square and you do have that sample size greater than 40 and zero cells have expected count less than five, a good argument could be made for using the Pearson chi-square. And if any of the cells have an expected count less than 5, or you have a sample size less than 40, then Fisher's exact test would be a good choice. And in that instance, there is no real need for the continuity correction, meaning using those guidelines, we wouldn't use Yates correction. We would just be deciding between Pearson chi-square and Fisher's exact test. Remember that no matter which set of guidelines you use in terms of interpreting these different tests, set that decision in place prior to running the analysis so that you know coming in that based on a certain expected count or sample size or both, you'll be interpreting one statistic instead of another. I hope you found this video on the chi-square test and SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.